Okay, great. So Reinhold, thank you for this wonderful setting and for joining yes. uh, me today. Um, you have you wear two many hats, but the two that uh, principal hats you wear at GSAP are the um, sequence director for the history theory curriculum uh, for the MARC uh, program, as well as the director of the Buell Center for American uh, Architecture. Um, I wanted first to really discuss strategically the first shift you made to the history theory sequence, moving from this notion of architectural history to a notion of questions around architectural history and what that represents in terms of opening up um, that field. Yeah, well, there's probably no more urgent time than now to ask as many critical questions as we can uh, about our world, our history, our societies, uh, the world that we so evidently share. And so we uh, have an amazing faculty, I have to say, first of all, and I'm very, very privileged and, and proud, honestly, to teach with such, with such great colleagues on the, the history or history and theory faculty here at GSAP. And, and, and to be honest, part of what we have done in the last few years is, is to maximize, uh, you know, kind of in a curricular sense, the, the interactions that, that the, the MARC students and, and by extension also the AAD students have with, with that faculty. Uh, and by turning what was a, a sequence that was previously known as Architectural History 1 and 2, the introduction, inter, introductory lecture courses to, uh, to the history uh, of architecture since about the uh, middle of the 18th century uh, up to the m middle or end of the 20th century. We, we been turning that into a series of seminars uh, that in which the students interact more directly with the faculty uh, and do so in a more, shall we say, Socratic manner where there, there's more opportunity for dialogue. Uh, there's more opportunity to raise the kind of questions that students come with. I mean, they, you know, it's the students very frequently are asking the questions they represent in many ways, the Q in QAH, in the questions in architectural history. Um, the other thing that we, we did uh, with that, so it was to, to shift, in a sense, um, the, the time and space coordinates of the curriculum uh, a little bit. We teach basically the history of architectural modernity, broadly understood. Uh, we now, in a sense, frame that in terms of the, um, the, the long arc uh, that begins more or less in, in, uh, in around 1800 around the world, literally around the world, in what is still known in most quarters as the Industrial Revolution, although that term itself um, is, is uh, up for some uh, questioning. The, the point of that is, is to emphasize the role that architecture and urbanism uh, and landscape, I should say, I'm standing here in Riverside Park uh, on the west side of Manhattan, um, which is an object, a park a space from the 19th century. Uh, and, and it's the kinds of spaces that we study uh, in, uh, in part one, the, the first semester, the fall of uh, QAH. So these, these uh, kinds of spaces are directly connected to many, many processes that we now recognize uh, in, with terms like globalization, uh, global cities and so on. So for example, quick little uh, story about Riverside Park. It was designed first by Frederick Law Olmsted, the designer of Central Park. Parks in the ninth, this is in the late, later 19th century, uh, were, on, were called at that time the lungs of the city. They were the places where people literally came out to breathe. Why? You know, why? Because there was soot in the air. There was coal uh, and, and oil, but mostly coal. Uh, being burned uh, for fuel and to, to, to power big cities like New York and the industries that were driving them. Uh, this park had actually a train line that, that ran, still does, it's now the Amtrak line and the freight line that is well known, very world famous now at the other end in lower Manhattan uh, as the High Line, it's the same line. And so basically what happened is that train line came up along the side of the, the, the west side of the island, Manhattan Island, and, uh, and Olmsted designed Riverside Drive with its kind of curvilinear facades, uh, the, these grand uh, buildings you may be able to see behind me, um, and, and a kind of buffer of a park before you got to the trains. Subsequently, Robert Moses, another major figure uh, now in the 20th century uh, in the development of American cities, uh, particularly New York, City, New York City, he was the city, the, 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 at that time he was the Parks Commissioner actually, um, led the redesign of the park 
for the development of the park to cover over the railway because people couldn't breathe. You know? <laughs> and so, uh, and simultaneously, there was an order to convert all these trains, coal, coal powered trains, to, to electricity. Uh, and so this mirrors many of the things that we're witnessing right now in our, our world today. And this is also very importantly, uh, one, of the, one of the kind of central episodes in the process, long process, by which a city like New York became what we now call a global city. It was the industry, the trade, the commerce, the, the immigration, and, and the growth of the city up now in this area north where Columbia is uh, on, on the west side. So that's the kind of little, you know, synopsis, the kind of little tutorial, of the kind of things that we we try to discuss and the way we kind of connect uh, historical processes to, to, to contemporary concerns, uh, but also to, uh, to, to cross, you know, connect the dots in a sense, between something that might be happening in New York to something that might be uh, happening uh, on another side of the world where, where some of the goods that are being shipped to New York uh, are coming from. So, so that, and it's, you know, we've found that this, this QAH model has enabled us to, um, to, to have conversations about that where students coming from all over the world can ask questions about how this history connects with, with histories that they may be more familiar with uh, and so on and so forth. So that's, uh, you know, maybe how we have sought to, to, to deprovincialize, to globalize, to, you know, open up the, the curriculum. I mean, two things that brings to mind uh is one is this opening up you kind of expanded the library of references and yeah. been working uh, on that as an effort and two um, moving back and forth not you know no longer just focusing on the architectural object but you know what is in, in between the objects and these yeah. kind of relations and and what's fascinating is you know just the story you just told right about this moment is you know as you say mirrors so much this moment we are in now and how mm -hmm. history can really teach us uh, as designers as architects you know to think about uh, you know other ways of uh, projecting um, the yeah. future mm -hmm. um, and in particular i you know wanted to tie that sort of teaching to your other hat the director yeah. of the Buell center and um, you know how you've I think really advanced this notion of you know what is architectural research today and how can we bring uh, people together the disciplines together um, to think about um, architecture for the future cities for the future in light of all uh, the concerns around climate health care uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and more and I think the project that happened last spring uh, public works for Green New Deal which was initiated by the Buell Center and brought together faculty from across um, the school but also uh, um, I think brought together um, kind of historian theorists and practitioners I think that kind of cross-section was so exciting to the students and I want you, you to expand a little bit yeah. on that um, yeah. and and uh, how we can learn from that to move forward. Well, yeah, no, absolutely. So, so first of all, one of the things I should add about history, about historians and, and, and the, you know, uh, about my wonderful colleagues on the faculty is that as, as any, the one thing, the one truth in a sense that, that I think any historian can affirm, can, can, can explain is that things change. Right? And, and so, now, uh, in, in contemporary conditions, one of the most uh, massive and consequential changes that we are grappling with is, is climate change. And it really is the climate question, in a sense, that, that, has, that bridges between these two uh, areas that, that we're talking about. The Q, it, it, you know, the questions with which we begin, the history theory sequence, I should add, that of course there are other more specialized seminars that are, are distribution requirements, uh, in North and South, uh, the Global North and Global South uh, in different time uh, periods uh, for each uh, MR student later in their, in their three years uh, with us. Um, but the, 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 we do try to kind of open up the climate question and connect it with other social questions and historical questions, technological questions and artistic questions uh, right at the beginning. And, and uh, you know, and every uh, faculty member has different, a different way of doing that. Um, in my own teaching in that course uh, in, in QAH and, and in my work at the Buell Center, I have tried to emphasize relations between uh, climate and society. Uh, and so it's kind of in that spirit that the public works project that you mentioned um, was, uh, we developed that project uh, in uh, last semester, uh, last year um, 
in uh, at the Beale Center. So uh, the basic guide dog. First of all, I should say that I'm also standing in one of the prototypes for one of these uh, kinds of projects. The Riverside Park was actually mostly built. It's in its major kind of when they actually buried the uh, the rail line and made and extended the park down uh, to the to the West Side Highway uh, near the water. This was built during the New Deal, uh, and it was built with funds from the new uh, the New Deal uh, uh, programs um, with, with the Works Project uh, Administration, Progress Administration. So that that's an example of a public works. I'm you know literally standing in, in one of the most amazing uh, instances of what what the uh, government support uh, uh, with uh, in intelligent design and. Uh, and thinking and, and foresight planning, planning, long-term planning and so on can achieve for a city. So, you know, that kind of thinking, we could say sort of New Deal in the US context, New Deal style thinking and many other examples around the world uh, it was what inspired the, this, this project. That's why it's called Public Works. Uh, we basically asked, you know, were we to, to in, embark on a large scale significant effort uh, nationally uh, kind of correlated to the Green New Deal a proposal that has circulated now very widely uh, in, in the American public sphere and around the world, uh, then what, what, what might it look like and how might, might that happen? Uh, and we, we encourage people to, to think about this critically, not just to execute some sort of predetermined program, but, but to think critically, again, this is the Q part, the questions, uh, in, in all their dis different disciplines. And so we, we got together and we worked all worked together with the dean's office and, and and many colleagues in the faculty to put together a group of what turned out to be nine courses uh, across the curriculum it's documented on on the website on the buell center website on the gsap website um there are interviews with faculty with students there's you know so on student work and uh in in which basically the green new deal was was as, as it formulated in hr 109 the house uh, u.s house re resolution that pretty much started this conversation uh as a starting point for the studios seminars uh workshops basically uh, policy colloquia uh and so on that 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 we we helped to to set up um, we also coordinated with colleagues uh, outside, you know, and this happened to be at, at the University of Pennsylvania. There was a big conference at Penn that the Beale Center co-sponsored, and, and we actually, we brought all the students, there's like 150 students, to Philadelphia to spend the day at this amazing conference. Naomi Klein is a keynote, all the kind of Sunrise Movement people and all the very important kind of figures who have been publicly active in in Green New Deal uh, and related uh, thinking were there and, and the students could, could kind of get a sense of the larger conversation of which this was uh, a part. Now, of course, we're in an academic institution, so, so we are, our job is to ask questions, is, is not, you know, and, and in this case, to ask questions about policy, but also about um, public life. So our colleagues in each in their own way interpreted uh, these, uh, the, this, this kind of general uh, suggestion or provocation uh, in, in various studio briefs uh, or, or they, there was travel involved going to different parts of the country to often uh, work with distressed communities, kind of what are known as frontline communities, people who work who are often right, really right on the front lines of climate change and, and to address different scales, different aspects. For example, the whole urban design curriculum for one semester was focused on the Hudson Valley specifically uh, in relationship to this, uh, the Green New Deal, uh, the implications for that in, in that part of the country. So um, we, we hope to, we intend to continue with this work. Now, of course, we're in a different and a kind of, uh, uh, it's an even more dramatically uh, urgent uh, uh, kind of crisis situation uh, in which um, it, we're, we're dealing with an immediate uh, crisis, but we're also uh, thinking and, 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 and about the connections between, between these two things uh, and anticipating that what we really do have to do is to rebuild our societies, and I say this plural, in a manner that is, that is sustainable and, and that is equitable and, and that is, is, not, is, is ready in a sense and, 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 and attempts to mitigate, uh, shall we say, uh, to, the, uh, to use a term uh, that's in circulation today, um, climate change, to change climate change, to, 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 to uh, limit uh, its, most, its worst effects, and perhaps ultimately even uh, to, uh, to, to, to 
halt it or if not even reverse it. So that's the kind of thinking that, that we're, we're, we're kind of engaged in at the Beals. Thank you, Reinhold. I think that what's exciting, you know, I can, I'm imagining uh, students listening to you is that, you know, first of all, history is so alive. It's so exciting yeah, right now yeah, to be it's a now. <laughs> history yeah. is happening as and, we speak. And to, to make it, you know, to make it so tangible and, and, uh, and, 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 you know, kind of empowering uh, students, I think, to think about change and the possibility of change.